Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Minecraft video, I'll be showing you how to make high-resolution or high-res graphics in Minecraft and why you may not want to do that. While you're here, take a look at my channel. I have hundreds of videos up there on working with graphics programs and doing design work, and I put up videos every single week. Right now, I'm doing Photoshop videos on Thursday, Photoshop or Photoshop Elements or sometimes other stuff on Saturday. On Monday, I'm doing Photoshop Elements. And on Tuesday, like right now, just for the fun of it, I'm doing some Minecraft videos. Okay, let's move on to Minecraft and take a look at how to make your high-res graphics. In this video, we'll be talking about graphics specifically for Minecraft and I assume that you already know how to make a texture pack, how to find your graphics files in that texture pack, find your textures, find the block textures, and then open those up inside of Photoshop Elements or Photoshop or whatever program you want to use for your graphics. It doesn't really matter. But you'll need to have that information. If you haven't seen my previous video on how to make a custom texture pack, custom resource pack, Take a look at that video first before you watch this video. You need to have that information before you get to this point. You'll find a link for that right up there, upper right hand corner. Just click on that and go to that video and watch through that one. And then come back here to this video to learn about doing these high res images. We'll be looking at the spruce door and in particular the top of the spruce door, the top half. Here is the basic graphic, the basic texture for the spruce door. Again, this is the top half of the spruce door and it's in 16 by 16. I've replaced this with a photograph and you can see it right over there. A nice photograph of a nice actual oak door from a castle and we'll be using this in place of this. Now the basic process is really very easy. All you have to do is simply up res your graphic up to the size that you want. Now you have several choices. This is 16 by 16. That's your default. Right here we have 32 by 32. This one is at 64 by 64. This one is 128 by 128. This one is 256 by 256. This is your 512 by 512. A lot of people talk about that one. Now the way you do this is, again, real easy. Just make your image larger. In Elements, that's going up to the image, coming down to Resize, Image Size. There's your 16 by 16. Let's say I wanted to have this at 64 by 64. Let's just type in 64 right there and choose OK. Now you'll see this. You'll see it's just kind of a really messy thing. Just zoom out on that. Grab the magnifying glass, whatever tool you're using, and then zoom out. And there you go. Now the reason why it comes in real fuzzy like this, this will be the same for most of your programs, and that's because we're making the image larger. It was about this big way down here, about like that size. So in order to make it this big, the program has to put in and make up a lot of new pixels. So it expands the image up and fills in all the gap, and that tends to make images real soft. Of course, you can fix that just by putting in a different picture, like we have over here with this photograph. I already have this one sized correctly, see right there? But this is at 512 by 512. It'll still be too big to fit inside here. But you simply bring it in and then save that out again and you're just fine. Now here's this exact same image over here, but brought down to 64 by 64. And you can see there's the original in the background and I have this in here as a top layer. Once I have my new image in here, all you have to do is simply save this onto your original image. Just save it out as a PNG 8. Inside of Photoshop Elements, that's going up here to File, Save for Web and then choosing PNG 8, which is right here. Normally I'll leave transparency selected, it doesn't matter on this image. And perceptual works out fine, no dither is fine, then choose save and save it back to its original location with the original file name and you're all done on that one. So that would then be your new image at that resolution. Now I wanted to talk a minute about why you may not want to do this kind of a large resolution size over here. Again, this is, let me just put this one back a little bit. I'll just step back to the original, which is right there. That's the original resolution. And we'll zoom back up on that. 
So we can see that. There it is. That's the original image, original resolution right there. It's a bit too large. There we go. I'll stick that right over here. So that's what the door normally looks like. The next one up here, this is my photograph, but brought down to 32 by 32. And it's, still, it's pretty blocky. It's pretty pixelated, as you can see. When I bring this image down to 64 by 64, it actually looks pretty good at this point. I had to do a little bit of stuff with sharpening the focus and a little bit of contrast work, but nothing major in there. And that's like 64 by 64. Once I get up to 128 by 128, it looks almost exactly the same as the photograph at that size. And this will be smaller on your screen. So once you get up to 128, anything beyond that, all you're doing is making your file size bigger without really gaining anything as far as the look goes. And to be totally honest with you, 64 by 64 in most cases is all you need to have a real nice photographic look. And the reason why you have smaller file sizes, why this is important, is that Minecraft has to go in and place this on every single use of this particular tile in your game and that really increases how much information Minecraft has to work with and run with. That's why they use really low graphics, low quality graphics, so they can do all of those blocks all over the whole screen, keep track of where everything is in 3D and still have the game run at a reasonable pace. The higher your graphic, the slower the game is going to run and it's by a lot. Now this 16 by 16 going to 32 by 32, this file size is four times larger than this file size. This file size here is 16 times larger than this file size. So the file size goes up very quickly. Let me just show you an example of this. I've already saved out this spruce door here at 64 by 64. There we go. Let's go back to our game here. And there are those nice new oak doors, nice new castle doors. They look great in here, as you can see. But the top part, the top half of the door, this is at that 64 by 64. The bottom half of the door is at the 512 by 512. And as you can see, there really is very little difference between the two when you're actually in the game and working with the game. It looks a lot nicer, of course, back there in Photoshop Elements. But again, once you're in the game, it really doesn't make any difference. Once you get up to about 64, by 64, you're about as high as you really need to go. Okay, so there it is. So the smaller the file size, the faster your game is going to run. Now, it's not a big deal here with my just doing these doors, but if I went in and changed all my stone or changed all the dirt to a real high res, I would see a change in performance on the game. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a high-end gaming machine, no problem, make them as high as you want. But realistically speaking, there's a limit to how far you really have to go to make it worthwhile. So again, those doors, the top halves are at 64 by 64. The bottom half is at 512 by 512, and you really can't tell the difference. Okay, let's go back over to Photoshop Elements. There we go. So I was using this one right here for the tops of those doors. Now I could have gone up here to the 128 by 128 and had practically photographic, you know, perfect photographic at that point. As you can see though, going beyond 120 by 120, you really don't gain anything. And you especially will not see any difference in the game. These will all look exactly the same in the game. So 120 by 120 as high as you ever really need to go. And if you can make it work at 64 by 64, you're better off. Now 32 by 32, obviously that's looking kind of blocky and that's better than the original but it's still pretty blocky. I think 64 by 64 is a real nice level for most uses in the game. Again, if you're a perfectionist, go up to 120 by 120, but just keep in mind that this is going to run four times, or it's gonna be a file size that's four times larger than the 64 by 64. So again, you're really gaining a lot of overhead for the game by going to these larger graphics. So here's the original image. This is right from the block folder in the textures folder. This is our 16 by 16 PNG file. Let me just pull this out to the size so you can see that right up there. There it is. Spruce door top PNG. And this is 16 by 16. To up res, all you have to do is go up to, in this case, image and resize. Basically the same thing for Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Other programs are very similar. 
just make the width and the height the size you want. Leave it at a resolution of 72. Don't touch that. Don't bother with that. Just do the width and the height. I personally like 64 by 64. I think that's a real good high res scale in most uses. Choose OK. Zoom out. We'll just zoom back out like this. Don't worry about the out of focus on this image. We're replacing that anyway. And then all you have to do is bring in your other image. Let me actually show you that here. Here's my photograph. I'll pull that in. Photograph, of course, is way, way, way too big. I need to bring this one down in size quite a bit. I'll quickly do that. Control T keyboard shortcut brings up my control handles. And let's just scale this down. There we go. Pull the corner down, scale it down. And keep on going until it fits. And that fits right there. Scale up to fit. And there it is. Now, when you resize an image like this, it will go to a bit out of focus. Always happens. So simply sharpen that up. In this case, I use the enhance, just sharpness right there. And we'll give it a little bit of sharpness in here. That looks pretty good. Choose OK. If you want to, you can adjust your contrast levels and so forth. But that's really all there is to it. We now have this new graphic here at 64 by 64. Simply save this out as a PNG file on top of your original image. Just save it over the original image. In this case, save for web, PNG 8, right there and save it to your original image location as your PNG image. Once that's done, you're all set to go. Of course, you'll have to, at that point, remake a new texture file as I described in my previous video. I'm making custom texture files. So take a look at that just to refresh your memory and how that happens. But that's really all there is to it. The real important thing here on this video, I think, is to Keep in mind that you really don't have to go that high on your resolution. There's no need to go to 512 by 512. There really isn't. 256 by 256, that's still pretty high. I wouldn't go any higher than 128 by 128. And my preference is 64 by 64. That's going to look just great in the game and keep your file sizes down as well. So there you go. That's how to make a high definition graphic, high definition texture inside of Minecraft and why you may not need to go that high.